Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. All the lessons in the listening section of the website and on my YouTube channel are packed full of tips, strategies and advice. But this video covers 10 things I especially want to highlight. Tip 1 is to listen to English every day. This is the only way to improve your listening skills. It doesn't matter if it's just 10 to 15 minutes here and there as you're travelling on a bus eating lunch or cooking tea. Just listen to something. You need to hear English used naturally in many different contexts and spoken with a range of accents. In your test, you could hear speakers from the UK, including different regional accents, from Ireland, the US, Canada, New Zealand, Australia or South Africa. Tip 2. Listen to a range of things. The test will include two monologues, where just one person speaks, and two conversations, so you must practice listening to both. You'll find all the practice material you need online. Podcasts and TED Talks are great for listening to monologues, and radio broadcasts and interviews on YouTube ideal for conversations. Tip 3. Improve your vocabulary. This might seem obvious, but many students don't know the most effective way to improve their vocabulary. Just memorising lists of words will achieve very little. You won't fully understand the words, what they mean and how they're used in context, and you'll quickly forget them. When you listen to spoken English, listen actively. That is, note down words you hear that are unfamiliar and you don't fully understand. Then, check them out in a dictionary. Note the meaning, pronunciation, how the word is used in a sentence, common synonyms, antonyms and collocations, and record all this information in your vocabulary notebook. Yes, this takes time, but it's time well spent. Every time you do this, you'll have added one more word to your vocabulary that you'll remember and be able to use confidently in all parts of the IELTS exam. Tip 4 have a strategy. To score highly in the listening test, you need to understand the 10 different types of questions and have a strategy for answering them. Here are the 10 different types. You'll find lessons on how to answer each of them in other videos and on the website. I put links in the notes below this video. Tip 5. Identify your weaknesses. You'll often hear me say practice, practice, practice. And of course you must, but practice wisely. Just completing practice test after practice test isn't necessarily going to improve your score. Take time to analyse your results and determine what mistakes you're regularly making. Then work on improving these. Is it grammar that's letting you down? A limited range of vocabulary? Or do you find it hard to follow conversations? Identify your greatest challenges and focus on them. The Cambridge English books of authentic test papers and some online tests include transcripts of recordings. These will help you to understand why you got a particular answer wrong, so make use of them. Tip 6. The importance of the introduction. Before the first speaker begins talking, there will be an introduction by a narrator in which you'll be told what the recording is about, for example. You will hear a part of a seminar entitled Understanding the World's Oceans, given by a climate scientist. The speaker will then begin the talk or conversation by introducing themselves and often the subject or purpose of the talk, for example. Thanks to all of you for coming along today to hear about how the robotic float project is helping with ocean research. These introductions give important information that will help you to understand the recording. So, listen carefully right from the start. Tip 7. Signpost language. As the speakers talk, listen out for signpost language. We use signposting to connect ideas and indicate to listeners that we're moving on to a new idea. Signpost language includes such words as first, second, then, next, after that, Finally, in map or plan labelling questions, you might hear phrases such as 
moving on, or now we come to, or beyond the library you'll come to the. These also indicate progress. Recognising signpost language will help you to follow the recording and better understand what's being said. Tip 8. Remember to use capital letters for proper nouns. A proper noun is a name given to something to make it more specific. For example, a boy, or more specifically, a boy called Alex. A city, specifically London. A country, specifically China. A day, specifically Monday. An organisation, specifically the United Nations. If you have difficulty remembering this grammar rule, write your answers for the listening test in capitals so you don't make a mistake. Tip 9. Read the instructions. Read them very carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you're allowed to write for the answer. For example, write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. If you write more than three words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you give is correct. Other questions might tell you to write no more than two words or only one word, so be very careful. Don't lose marks over silly mistakes like this. Tip 10. Are you ready? Don't book your test until you're ready to take it. I get many emails from students asking for last minute tips and tricks as their exam is a few weeks away and they know that their English is not good enough for the score they want. If you're not ready, don't take the test. The IELTS exam is designed to test whether your English is of the standard needed for the career or life change you're planning. No language tips and tricks are going to help you in real life, so don't expect them to in the test either. Put in the time and effort required for as long as it takes to get the score you need, and you'll eventually be living your dream. Take the test too soon and you'll experience only disappointment, a loss of confidence and wasted money. All my lessons are created to help you achieve your dream as soon as possible. Please make full use of them and study hard. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.